Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice Making It Happen. And today we are talking about the FL Sun Q5 Delta Printer right there. What's good about it? What's bad about it? You're about to find out. Stay tuned. Let's crack on with the unboxing. Usually I'm not a fan of unboxing videos, but in this case I figured it might be helpful for somebody looking to buy one of these. On initial opening, you're greeted with the Q5 legs each of which are labelled with the access letters and appear to be well built and have a red toggle switch for the motors to home to. The belts on the legs appear to have cable ties on the ends, which in hindsight isn't a big deal, but when you're used to seeing crimp metal ends, you have to remind yourself this is a 180 pound budget printer. In this box, I didn't get a UK style kettle lead. They were EU and US, I believe. Wrapped up inside the box, you'll find six legs which attach to the hot end and the stepper motor points. This allows for the hot end to move around easily. These end points will need to be well maintained and lubricated as part of your printer maintenance. We have two manuals. One tells you how to level and goes on to explain the power settings for your region. The other explains how the printer is assembled with an easy to follow guide. This information can also be found on the USB stick inside the packaging. And well wrapped here is the all metal hot end. You'll also find the usual cutters, allen keys and a small bit of filament to get you going. So this is FL Sun's latest Delta 3D printer, the Q5. And it's the baby brother to the FL Sun QQS Pro, which also has had a recent update. The QQS Pro has a larger build space of 255 by 360, while the Q5 has a modest 200 by 200 build space. But this is not the smallest Delta on the market right now, and not the size of printer that I would usually go for. However, this printer has really surprised me. Currently at the time of recording this, the Q5 is currently on sale at banggood.com for just shy of 180 pounds, and the QQS Pro is around the 300 pounds mark. So at £180 for this printer, this is a really good deal. Why? Well, if you're even looking at a Delta printer over a Cartesian style, then maybe you're looking to print small but tall, and certainly fast. Deltas are made for speed. And in this case, the sight of three arms whipping around is pretty cool. The Q5 has a 32-bit control board made by MakerBase, and it's an MKS Robin Nano with three detachable TMC2208 stepper drivers, which enables a reduction in motor noise. So this is the top of the unit and these cables plug into the all metal hot end. This little unit here is used for leveling. It's quite easy to lose that, so make sure you put it somewhere safe. So after some searching, I finally find the base, which includes the heated bed. I'm obviously by this time very, very excited to be getting the last bit out of the box. There it is. So we have a quick change of view now as I glance over the instructions and start unpacking all the bits and pieces that are inside the box. So this Delta printer runs on 24 volt and there is a branded power supply inside which is fanless, again aiding in some of the noise reduction, a color touch screen, and an all metal Titan style hot end. Features also boast resume printing, easy leveling, which is brilliant, and dare I say it, almost idiot proof. So the printer is very easy to assemble. All the bolts are the same. All you need to do is plug in the cables to the relevant parts, and you're away. It's worth mentioning as well, the cable that comes out to the right hand side of the printer is actually for the heated bed. So make sure you plug that in. The majority of the parts are pretty self-explanatory and all you need to do is attach the legs to the hot end and then to the stepper motors. So we're nearly finished up now. This is just putting the filament spool holder on top of the printer. This is something I don't like about the printer. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description for a Thingiverse file where you can get yourself an extension uh, to make this work a little bit better as it is not quite long enough for standard spools. The wiring again is very easy. Just plug it into where it says to plug it into. Nice and easy. 
So with the top off, you see that 32-bit board with those TMC2209 Tranamex stepper motor drivers. One of the stepper motor drivers is not a TMC. It's a cheaper part, I believe, uh, which might go on to explain some of the issues that I've had with the extruder making some weird noises. But I'm just checking all the cabling here and making sure that the settings on the power supply is set to my region, which is 220. And it is, and just checking over the printer just to make sure everything's okay and it's not uh, slipped out of alignment anywhere. And again, it is very, very happy. I've plugged it in and nothing went bang. And now I'm selecting the home button in order to level the nozzle to the bed. In order to do this, you need to attach the magnetic sensor to the hot end plug in the wiring loom and press a button. It will then check 27 points on the heated bed and work out where it needs to be when you finally start to print. I have sped this up because it's not that interesting. So let's start our first print. This is time lapsed, of course, and we're printing one of the FL Sun elephants. Really do wish it printed that fast, but unfortunately it's a little bit slower than that. And in this shot, we are printing a dome, which is the same as the one on the right hand side. One of the reasons why I bought this printer was to print that kind of stuff. This is interesting. This is the spool holder. Again, the link will be in the description below, and I'm just finishing off a dome here. It's coming into its final prints. Uh, I'm so impressed with this printer, it's really good. So this is the rather peculiar cheeping noise that I seem to be getting out of the extruder, which can only put down to the slightly cheaper stepper motor that's installed in the motherboard. So I'm gonna have a look at that and see if I can improve upon it, but it is a noise that's there, so uh, you know, just be aware. So, what's the verdict? I am impressed with this printer. This dome was printed on it, and we gave it a bit of a torture test with a number of different bits and pieces, including these cogs, these little arms, some other parts that I'm building for a uh, little droid that I'm working on at the moment. But I am very, very impressed with this, uh, and the quality of the prints is actually pretty damn good. Uh, I'll just show you a few little bits on here. It's not bad, it's not bad. And bear in mind, you know, this is a £180 Delta printer, and there are a lot of positives there. A hell of a lot of positives. The only negatives, I guess, would be that single stepper driver that isn't a TMC 2208. The cable ties and the fan is a little bit loud. But other than that, it's printed flawlessly for all these little parts. Uh, and I am dead impressed with the whole thing. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And speaking with the uh, management team over at FL Sun, they've informed me that their core focus now is on Delta printers. So I'm really, really happy that there's a manufacturer out there that are really focusing their time and efforts on this. So thank you to the guys over at FL Sun. This printer is amazing. It's a great budget printer. So if you're looking, you're looking for some sound advice, I would suggest this is a good one to go for 100%. I'm going to continue to print with this. Please follow me on Instagram at the Real Sam Prentice. Please subscribe and like and comment if you feel the need to. I really want to know what you want to see next. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.